Hello children, welcome to the second part of my chapter which seems to be the body fluid and circulation. Today in this class, I am going to explain to you about the open type and closed type of circulatory system. Okay? So in this class, I would be emphasizing more on the evolutionary trends of the heart. Okay? Evolution. In the primitive characteristics, what are the primitive characteristics, what are the modern characteristics, how the heart has been modified, these all things which we, we would be dealing in this section. Okay? So as you can see there is open type and closed type of circulatory system. So first of all you must know that the open type of circulatory system is the primitive one. It is the primitive circulatory system while the closed circulatory system this is the advanced feature. Advanced. In the open type of circulatory system it is found in the lower invertebrates. Lower in vertebrates. What do you mean by the term invertebrates? The organisms which lack notopod. Okay? They are known as invertebrates. You might have heard about the word poriferans, molluscans, right? So they have low so they have open type of circulatory system. Okay. Now what happens in the open type of circulatory system ki, uh, in lower vertebrates actually the blood is not present. The actual blood is not present. In place of blood there is a fluid known as hemocylom. Hemocylom which is present. Okay. All the organs are directly bathed into the directly based into this hemocylom. See, I will draw a diagram and show you. Likewise, these are organs. As you know, these are organs, smaller. Okay? And the hemocylom is all around them. Okay? So, this is the fluid which fills the celomic cavity. Okay? So these are the organs and this is the silomic fluid. Okay? These are the organs and this is the silomic fluid which is present over here. So you can see that these organs are directly in contact with the hemocylom or the silomic fluid and the gaseous exchange directly takes place through them. So this type of open type of circulatory system it is primitive and it is found in the lower invertebrates okay while in the closed type of circulatory system which happens to be the advanced type of circulatory system what happens over here that the blood is pumped blood is pumped through specialized vessels specialized vessels you very well know the name of the vessels these are arteries and veins okay <clears throat> at this point i would like to clear a point to you people which uh, you might encounter it in the various other concepts see how does this closed type of circulatory system and these vessels provide blood and oxygen to the or organ at the organ level see what happens a word which is known as anastomosis this is the word which is known as anastomosis now what does the word anastomosis means like see this is an artery okay when this artery divides it becomes arteriole Okay, now such arterioles further re-divide into see, it is further subdividing into capillaries. Okay, so this was an artery, this is an arteriole, and this happens to be capillaries 
this happens to be capillaries okay now here is the organ okay so remember this thing that capillaries are unicellular okay and the gaseous exchange will always take at the tissue level at the cellular level between cell to cell and tissue to tissue not from directly from organ to cell so there these arteries are divided and subdivided into single celled capillaries which provide oxygen to the cells of this organ see like this these are the cells of the organism and these capillaries are single celled they will provide oxygen directly to the cells of the organs now they have to take back the carbon dioxide which is produced as a metabolite hmm? so again these capillaries tend to unite and reunite to form a larger vessel known as vein see now how how does this happen this these things will reunite better they will reunite to form a thicker and a thicker vessel okay now this would be known as vein these are venules so there happens to be a meshwork of capillaries and venules to provide oxygen to a particular organ okay so first of all they divide and redivide and then they unite and reunite to form a vein which will carry the deoxygenated blood away from the organ okay so this is a key characteristic of a closed type of circulatory system okay hmm. then the second trend which i am going to explain to you about the evolutionary trend as i was telling you in the previous time is chambers of the heart chambers of the heart now what do you mean by the chambers of the heart and how is it concerned with the evolution so you find that most primitive most primitive heart is found in fishes fishes heart is venous heart beta venous heart it is also known as tubular heart most primitive heart is found in fishes and it is the venous heart or the tubular heart now what you you might be knowing ki uh, what do you mean by the term this like tubular heart what does it do see what happens there is a single circuit circulation system over here it is a single circuit circulatory system in which this is the body okay this is the body body gives out the deoxygenated blood deoxygenated blood to the gills to the heart okay the deoxygenated blood from the body is produced into the heart now heart directly pumps it to the gills for purification and gills in turn pass it on to the body so you can see over here that heart is only receiving the deoxygenated blood no oxygenation is going to take place over here in the heart okay so body to heart and from heart it is going to gills and this gills is providing the oxygenated blood ok 
in to the body so such type of single circuit circulation is found in the fishes okay now as we progress into the story of evolution after fishes came the amphibians okay after fishes came the amphibians now these amphibians have three chambered heart okay what do you mean by the word three chambered heart three chambered three chambered means the three chambered means the auricle is divided into two parts but the ventricle seems to be undivided okay the auricle both the auricles are divided in are divided so this is going to receive the deoxygenated blood from the body from the body it is going to receive deoxygenated blood okay and from lungs this part is going to receive oxygenated blood but eventually as the blood passes over here because this thing is also receiving the deoxygenated blood there is a mixing of blood where in the ventricles so in the three chambered heart system you can see that the body is giving the deoxygenated blood into this auricle from auricle it is going into the ventricles from ventricles again it is going into the lungs from lungs this oxygenated blood is coming into the left auricle and from when this left auricle is pumping the blood into this ventricle there is a mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood this is very important concept while considering the venous heart and arterio venous heart this is very important okay uh, for the people who haven't understood it for the first time again i am going to explain listen to it very carefully what happens in fishes the body is pumping the deoxygenated blood into the heart okay so heart is receiving only deoxygenated blood what is this heart going to do this heart is pumping that blood into the gills okay now what happens in the gills by like fishes respire through gills na so these gills are purifying this deoxygenated blood and it is becoming oxygenated blood which is supplied to the body so body is receiving the oxygenated blood this is a single circuit system in which the heart is only receiving the deoxygenated blood okay but in case of three chambered heart as in case of amphibians you can see that the heart is divided into one two and three chambers there is no demarcation between the ventricles okay so the body is providing the deoxygenated blood to the first chamber the first chamber is pushing the blood into this lower chamber okay which happens to be ventricle and it is not divided okay now what is this ventricle going to do it is pushing the blood into the lungs in the lungs the purification is happening by amphibians can breathe through lungs because they live on land as well as in water na so when this thing is going to the lungs it is getting purified and this purified blood is coming to the chamber number 2 now this chamber number 2 is receiving the oxygenated blood now it is pushing the blood again into this ventricle now I, as i have previously told you ki there is no demarcation between left and right ventricle right this thing first was pushing the deoxygenated blood over here so there is amount of deoxygenated blood already present over here okay now this second chamber is pushing the oxygenated blood over here 
so there is a mixing of blood of the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood in the ventricles of the amphibians okay that's why these amphibians have more than one way of respiring it is not just the lungs through which they respire they have two more ways through which these amphibians respire that is cutaneous respiration cutaneous respiration number 1 it is respiration through skin and the second is branchial respiration branchial respiration okay so there are three ways in which the amphibians respire just to compensate the amount of deoxygenation in their heart that is through lungs through cutaneous respiration and through branchial respiration there are three ways in which they respire okay so this is all about the evolution of the heart and how does the primitive organisms used to breathe and what modification did they come now in the modern heart in the heart which we have what happens if this ventricle is also subdivided into two parts so we have four chambers so from two chambered from two chambered heart to three chambered heart and then to four chambered heart this is the evolution and the evolutionary trend of the heart okay in the next chapter i would be dealing with the structures in detail which comprises the heart and the covering of the heart thank you